OK， testing testing。你想想看哦，你是一个电影明星，来给我一个傻傻的啊。<笑> Every time you go to a new place, that's the anticipation. 还是在闻闻那个榴莲的香味，嘴巴关起来，用眼睛来笑。嗯，对了。One of the questions they ask me is that, do you provide props? 神秘的笑容。嗯。Our advice to them is just come in what you will wear to a wedding. 帅了，帅了。I was very nervous. Because I'm not sure if I could actually do a good job. It's usually my aim every time for the person who sits on the chair to be happy when they leave. Your hair is very thin. Do you have any special things? I want to go to the restaurant. No, he will put it on the side. This is like this. This is like this. 我做按摩脚咯，啊，这种叫我会叫，我也不懂。我这里有朋友吗？对不对？能不能？不能不。啊 ，OK， 我们是你朋友。We have to try to connect with them because we are not only solely giving haircuts. So we also want to try to break this barrier between communities. It's quite difficult. Usually, when the back is done, you just follow through to the sides, lor. Yeah, but then the curve make one side longer than the other. Yeah, will lah, will. Yeah. But okay, I generally looks okay. When I first started as a volunteer in BAB, I went to YouTube and I watched barbering videos. So, can you stretch the skin a little bit? Definitely, over the past year of volunteering, it's much easier now. Ready? Can you? I'm very good. I'm very good. Oh, very good. This is called Chao Liu. Thank you, thank you. Okay. 在我的工作，我做很多研究关于食品的研究，研究食品的食品。所以，食品你看到在超市里是常常一个工作的食品的食品。在我的工作中，我做很多研究关于食品的研究，研究食品的食品。所以，我做很多研究关于食品的研究，研究食品的食品。所以，我做很多研究关于食品的研究，研究食品的食品。所以，我做很多研究关于食品的研究，研究食品的食品。所以，我做很多研究关于食品的研究，研究食品的食品。所以，我做很多研究关于食品的研究，研究食品的食品。And then convert it into a food product. When someone is in front of the camera, that person is vulnerable. That person is giving you his or her likeness for that moment to be captured, frozen, and presented in a photograph. And my job as a photographer is to make that person be. Comfortable with that process, so that the true personality can come out. Good, nice. Good. Chin up slightly. Good. Very photogenic. Okay, good. The time when you're looking at, that's very nice. Also. Well, I'm a commercial photographer by day, 
I shoot portraits of my clients. That's right, chin up a bit more. Nice. Your face this way. That's good. Hold. Lower my head, right? Then, you can have a lot at home. Desmond is a Hong Kong actor. Good one. <laughs> You'll be surprised that even the richest person in Singapore can feel uncomfortable in front of the camera. Be as uncomfortable as the papa who hasn't taken a photo for the last 20 years. So there is a kind of equalizing factor when you're in front of the camera. I can speak for most of my team. During COVID, what we experienced was really nothing short of an existential question. Is photography essential? We wanted to show that photography can contribute to the society in an intangible but yet important way. So One Portrait is a documentary project that helps to give elderly people a dignified portrait of themselves, preferably from the lower income group because they do not have access to professional photography. Photography records the encounter that you had with the person. That is the unique and Wonderful magic about photography. I think there's an immense sense of satisfaction that you are able to make somebody happy, that you can give somebody that spark of joy with something as simple as a portrait. And may that moment then give them many more moments of joy in their lives. <laughs> Empathy is probably the most important skill in photography because if you can't feel what the other person is feeling, you will not be able to put the other person at ease. <laughs> some Asian countries, but like, you know, the, the bigger ones or something, and they just kind of group together sometimes. Actually, like every country is very different. Yeah, I really felt like I was the minority there because in Singapore, everyone, like 75% um, of our population is Chinese. And then when I went there, I looked totally different. When I was staying in the Netherlands, I think it was during a National Day program that they aired people who were helping in our community. So it was the founder of Back Alley Barbers. He really wanted to bridge the gap between our main population and also the migrant worker community. It hit me so hard because I do feel people treat you a little more differently than the majority of the population. And then at that moment I thought, ah, if I return back to Singapore, I want to do something uh, for my community and to contribute back to my own country. Ultimately, what we are doing over here is not about the cuts, it's about trying to spend time or giving us a platform to communicate. He actually kept thanking me and said like, thank you for the haircut. And that really made my day. By just a thank you or a smile. Thank you. Okay, let's go eat dinner.
that was very, very rewarding because as a documentary photographer, you bring people across time and space to your perspective, to your view, to experience what you experience, right? He was happier. He was definitely happier. Going to Nepal really changed him and that also changed his way of taking photographs later on. You know, the way he connect to people. Some people will actually ask, who is this, right? Like you also asked me, who is this, right? It's a team of us. We go out and set up shop, and then we do a free portrait session for them. We make them laugh. But when do you think they will need a picture like that? Mm, to remember their old memories. It holds memories of what happened to, uh, to you like, like in the past. And sometimes about what you did when you were a small child or anything, or what happened to you. It is my gift to my children because I didn't want them to kind of know history only from a textbook. I want them to know it through their father's eyes. Do you even remember why you became a photographer? This question has, has always been murmuring at the back of my mind. But it is such projects like One Portrait, like Notes from a Singapore Sun, that kind of brings me back to why I started as a photographer in the first place. The love for this ability to tell stories with photographs. Train service was at 2 o'clock and Papa was there taking photos of how they spend the New Year's Day. My mom is a hairdresser. While growing up, that was when I saw this is a job that requires a lot of labour, a lot of standing, a lot of time away from family, especially on festive seasons. I said to myself, this is the last job in the world that I want to do.你看他剪什么发型 if you ask me, even after 18 years in the industry, there is a certain anxiety that I might not be able to deliver. I may not connect well with that person. So you from 65 years old, to 75 years old, you start to take photos. Ah, the people to take photos. In the course of talking to them, then you will feel that actually they have had a really interesting life. And some of them have had many challenges in this life. But there is some kind of resilience that you, you sense. La, that no matter what they have gone through, in this moment, they are here, they are present. It's a testament to something that in this moment, he's here and no matter what his situation is, he should be seen. You see the photo? Yes. Okay. Ah, okay. Ah. <laughs>
，因为我们都是专业的，我们平时都是有拍一些好像老总啊或者部长啊那些人。可以给你拍吗？部长给你。可以，他们请我们拍。One of the things that we try to do with one portrait is to give them the same treatment as our paying clients, because we believe that photography as a process is as important as photography as a product. The whole process of being welcomed into the whole setup, ushered to the makeup booth to be properly groomed to look your best, and yet being treated in such a way that you feel that you are respected during the whole process. Very good, very good, very nice. Turn your head up. Ah. Actually, today I'm quite excited because uh, we haven't been cutting for the migrant workers for quite some time because of COVID. Guys, thanks for coming down. Uh, it's been a while since we've been here. Lah. So, uh, as you know, the recent COVID cases has been you know, fluctuating a little bit. So, I think today what we're doing over here is that we're restarting it since uh, a couple of months back. We don't see any migrant workers. It's the first time I experienced this. Jiang Xia, take a picture. Okay, you take it down. Okay. When you give them the pictures, there's always that worry that they can't say, ah boy, that one not nice la, that picture, then like, ah yeah. The favourite part is really turning somebody from their daily, not so glamorous self, to somebody who looks confident, somebody who looks happy, somebody who has the dignity of life inside them, in that one portrait. Yeah. It's more surprised, like, you know, it's not like your typical pose. Yeah. It was slightly awkward, but yeah, it, it, it kind of made a picture. But I think he had a lot of fun that day. He yeah, looked he like totally he was all. enjoying himself being a model for that 20 minutes. Totally. Yeah. Okay, I think we can get the first couple. This is really like graduation ceremony. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we are close to giving up, after waiting for two hours, we finally saw migrant workers coming in. Hey, ha love SG that best. Hello, what's your name? Silvum. Silvum. Yeah. How do you want your haircut today? Ah, short, huh? For migrant workers, they tend to know what they want for their haircut. Because there's a language barrier one, you want to understand what kind of haircut that you need. So during scaffolding, you have to wear a helmet, is it? Helmet, always. Yeah, the safety are number one. Safety? Of course, safety is number one, you know? The honors are heavy, heavy. Heavy. My favourite part about being a volunteer is the conversations that I have with the people that I have haircut with. Do you have family back in India? Uh, one son and daughter. One son and daughter. How yeah. old are they? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half. Uh -huh. And then the son? Son uh, only eight months only. He told me when his wife was about seven months pregnant, he actually came to Singapore. So, of course, the wife was really sad, but he said it's for the family, for uh, living, so that's why he needs to be here. For me, everyone is human, so everyone is just trying to get a livelihood out of wherever we are living in. It makes me feel very grounded, to be honest. Like we need to be appreciative of things we have in life.
Venom chance, sir. Yes. Yeah, oh, this is your照片. Yes. Mr. Ng, right? Okay. Thank you. 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 A lot of times, it's really not about the actual photo, but the whole experience that you give to them, even up to the point where you're delivering the photos. I saw your照片, Mr. Ng. You're in the water. Yes. That's right. 打水球的来来，这是你的照片。哎呀，很丑的。为什么呢？我不敢看啊，我不要看。真的，我不敢看啊，我叫我收起。Even if in the face of rejection from the subject, we try to take it very positively. We try to be jovial even in rejection. Hello. 有很多项目来往，但是这个我们一直都能够做一次课程一个月。我知道这会一直做下去，因为跟 Edwin 他会组织，即使我们被带走了我们的生活。我们不会停止我们的工作在未来的几个月或一年，因为有太多的要求在流入。漂亮漂亮，哇，这好漂亮，哇，你这样做的这个。There will always be people who don't like it, but I think at the end of the day. Closing that loop is very important for us. We are sin be sin, ah. I hope that even if they say that they don't like it, when they look at the picture, they remember that somebody cared. They remember that somebody felt that they mattered. So that that is most important. Let me know if too long or you want shorter. That's been it. I always think people tend to fear things they don't know, and then that's where I feel discrimination usually comes in. If you tend to only group with your own community, you will only have that set of thinking. It's important to expand your horizon, to talk to people. You have to understand things from another perspective. Okay, I know. Thank you.